What is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about GDB or the GNU debugger, and we're going to use GDB to find a bug in a particularly buggy program that I wrote over here on the left. For those of you that are pretty good at C, you'll probably see the bug in the program pretty quickly, um, but we're just gonna talk about GDB and how to use the various commands in GDB to debug a program and find bugs such as this one. So typically when people compile their code in C, uh, they use the following commands to do so, right? GCC, tac o, the name of the program, the source code that they use to create it, and then tack s to strip it, right? What that does is that creates a file, an elf, uh, and the file is stripped, which means that it's pretty small, uh, and it has a certain size to it, you know, 14k, not too bad, um, and we can run the program and get its functionality. But the problem with this is that we cannot run GDB on it and see the source code. It says no source code available. That's because we didn't compile our program with the debug information so that GDB can show us a, a human readable output of our program. So to get our program into that format where we can actually debug it, we're going to do an additional flag instead of tack s on our program. So we're gonna do GCC, tack o, main, main.c, you know, your, your source code, and then tack g. What that tack g does is it puts what's called debug information into our code. And the debug information does make our file a little bigger. Notice we added about 5K of information into the program. Um, but what that does is we can actually do lay next for layout next. And eventually when we hit enter a few times, we'll get to this nice view where we can see the source code in GDB that the program was created with and the assembly. And that makes it really, really easy to step line by line through our code and figure out where is this crash occurring, right? So the way that we wanna run our program is using a series of commands that GDB has. Um, the first one is we want GDB to stop execution at a known point. And for us, the known point, the only place that we've written code is the function main that has to be where our program has a bug, right? So let's add a breakpoint by typing break at the label main. So it says that breakpoint one is added to this address, which is where main lives in assembly, uh, which is also line four of our C. Awesome. So if we type run to start the program, the program will begin to run and it gets to where main is written in code and it stops and it says, hey, we're at main, what do we do now? So there are four instructions that allow us to step line by line through our code. Um, we can step through the C code line by line, and we could step through the assembly code line by line. Obviously, one line of C can imply multiple lines of assembly, right? So if we want to jump immediately to line five in C, where it says int D equals two, we just type next. That gets us to several lines through the assembly where it puts two onto the stack in the place that variable D lives. We also can, instead of doing next line of C, we can do the next line of assembly with next I, it's next instruction. And you see that moved us from this instruction in assembly to this instruction in assembly. So we'll do that one more time, next I. Okay, so this tells us that we are about to run the instruction that calls puts, right? And puts is a simplified version of printf, which prints this to the screen. The question is, do we want to go into puts and see what happens when puts gets ran? Or do we want to ignore puts entirely? That's what's called a step into versus a step over. A step into is when we step into puts to introspectively see its code. And a step over is when we go over puts and completely ignore it and, and stay in the context of main. So for example, if we wanted to step into puts, we would say step. The step command would call into puts and GDB would try to display the instructions of puts and the source code of puts to us. For the sake of this tutorial, we don't want to go into puts because we don't really care what happens inside of puts. Instead, we want to do next. Next, we'll jump over the call to puts and bring us to, in this case, line eight because it's a next and not a next I in our code. And then we need to do REF sometimes when programs print in GDB, it messes up the layout a little bit. So we type REF for refresh and that kind of cleans up the screen a little bit. So see, we've jumped over the call to puts and printed that output to the screen before I refreshed. And now it says that we're on line eight of our code. Great. So now we get to continue forward and just do another next instruction. Okay. So 
The next is hanging because the scanf function does expect input from the user. So I'm going to give it some number. I'm going to type five and hit enter. Ah, interesting. So me typing five and hint hitting enter caused a sig seg v or a segmentation fault. Uh, and now it tries to show us every piece of information that it can about what caused the program to fail. Um, so we can actually read through this. So something is wrong with the way that we wrote our scanf call, right? Because we have vf scanf internal. That function call is what's failing uh, and making the program crash. So another thing we can do is we can figure out exactly what instruction in assembly caused our program to crash. Doing that enables us to know what kind of bug we have and can give us further information to debug our program and fix our code. Um, so what, the way we can do that is we can do x slash, so that means examine, right, view memory, examine the instruction, so x slash i at pc. So here we see that the instruction is move into EAX the thing pointed to by RDX, okay? That's an Intel instruction that says dereference RDX, put it into EAX. So then we can do info registers to figure out what is the register state of the program that's causing this to happen during this instruction. So we can see that RIX is five and RDX is two. Well, if we go back to our instruction, we see that it's trying to dereference RDX and put it into EAX. Well, the number two isn't a valid instruction, so what's, what's going on here? The answer to the question is that scanf takes a pointer to an integer when you're getting user input. So it's actually, instead of giving you a pointer to D in this code, it's giving you the value of D and treating that as a pointer. GCC warned us about this. Uh, and it said, hey bud, um, this is indicative of an int star. You gave it an int, this is gonna cause issues. So instead, if we make this ampersand D, which is the address of D in C, and we fix our code, we get no warnings, we can run it, and it says you gave me four. I hope you learned something about GDB in this. Um, I'm gonna go a little deeper into GDB using core files in the next video, but if you like this or learned something, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, bye-bye.